are just about to finish up validation, and then we'll start talking about our project a little bit here. Um, okay, do I have this right? I think I have this right. That at the end of class last time, I need my handheld. Something about a reef is what I have written down, so it's very helpful. Um, we were looking at how parasites um, and community structure sort of go hand in hand. Um, and so we were looking at an example of how things like climate change can work together to affect disease distribution. Um, and so we had first talked about things like disease vectors. Okay, so the example there was looking at sort of that meta relationship, right, where the mosquito is, of course, a parasite and it's carrying around an endoparasite. And so as we think about how its um, habitat may be expanding, right, so we thought about this as like Zika was a big one in recent years. With warming, it gets an expansion of its habitat up north, right, and so it's going to also carry, it's a vector, so it's carrying, that's what we mean by vector, um, its load with it. And so more recently, Zika was the one that did that. But they have been carriers of this um, for many, many, many years. Um, okay, so this was the very last thing we ended on, so I just wanted to make sure we started on it and that this felt good to everybody before we touched forward. So the other thing we want to look at, in addition to vectors, so those are things that carry or move disease around, is that might be temperature itself, as we think of like warming waters moving diseases, or other organisms. Okay. The other thing we want to think about is a reservoir. Okay. So a reservoir is either a living or a non-living. So it can be a habitat, like soil, or it can be a host, like trees and rats, that hold on to parasites and pathogens. Um, and this disease or parasite can sit and live there and multiply and hang out until conditions are right or be carried around. And so really famous um, example is actually in the U.S., Somewhere around Nevada or Arizona, really famous area right now. Um, there is a, a segment of soil and trees that act as a disease reservoir for the plague, right, bubonic plague. And so they sit there right, in the soil in these tree pockets, right, totally benign, right, but alive, right, sustains the population. And then every once in a while, under the full moon, every 200 years. Now, when we get perfect conditions where it's just moist enough, right, just warm enough, which isn't that common in an area like the southwest. I had to think about there. Okay. So normally this is dormant, right? But when it just gets good enough conditions, so you get an increase in uh, foliage, which causes an increase in other organisms like it tends to bring through, it allows the disease to hop, and you get small pockets of plague in Arizona and Nevada. Okay. Now, it's not the big deal now that it was, you know, hundreds of years ago, right in the 1400s, when this wiped out Europe because we you know how to treat it now. Okay. But it's a disease reservoir. It sits there, it lives there, and waiting. There are lots of species that act as reservoirs. So 
any component that these parasites just sort of hang out in, right? They're not really doing anything to the organism. And they're not actively feeding off it, right? If an organism's sitting in soil, it's not feeding from that soil, okay? But it is sort of acting as a safe haven. Until the parasite is in good conditions or is moved to a location where it can find its host. And this is often why a lot of diseases and parasites are extraordinarily difficult to get rid of, is because they have so many vectors and have so many reservoirs. And while they may not be active, right, often they're difficult to completely eradicate because there's so many of these sort of sub-sources and sinks that they can go into. The difference between a reservoir and a vector very clear. Okay, so the very last thing I want to talk about, and I kept it just because, right, as promised, is enslavement. Okay, so this is a very parasite only thing. All of these other things, we can see a very clear parallel between parasites and predation. So we see why they sort of belong in the same unit together. Enslavement, very uniquely parasite slash parasitoid. Okay, so let's look at this graph, which has three bars. You know I like it. So what is this graph telling me? So if I were to get the take-home message from this graph, what would it be? What's on my uh, x-axis? i got to think through my words today. A virus type, right? So probably some kind of infection. That's what we've seen these mean before. Because right, that virus is probably in something. So if I just given you that graph, we may not know what that is, but it's in something. All right, what's going on on our y-axis? I don't remember my letters anymore. The height something reached before it died. So I am climbing or jumping or crawling. And these numbers are getting bigger, right? The 
definitely says the word increasing. Take my word for it today. <laughs> okay, so if I am increasing along this axis, sorry, I can't see. What is my take home? We don't have a control, which is probably questionable. We're comparing different virus types. What would it mean to die high? So you have a long climb. What happens when you're um, at the top of something? So what, like, what is up? Like, what am I climbing? Or crawling up? Like what kinds of things, I mean this is centimeters, but even if we weren't paying attention to that, like what kinds of things can you go up? Like, what are we talking about here? What's happening? Okay, so I'm climbing a plant, maybe a tree. So what happens if I'm sitting at the top of a plant or the top of a tree and then I die? Or I just climb up the plant. But seem smart? Asking, so you can probably guess no, right? <laughs> so if I am a sweet little mammal or a sweet little fuzzy caterpillar, then most of the time, where am I going to be? Am I going to be at the tippity top of a plant, waving my cute little legs in the air? Fucking no, right? I'm not waiting for a plane to land. I may be in the plant, living my best life, manch, manch, but I am hiding. I am cautious. We just went through a whole bunch of different predator defenses that I could have, and waving my little legs at the top of a plant is definitely not one of them. Okay. So what we see here is getting or having some of these virus types, they make me act pretty stupid. I am putting myself at risk. Either this is causing my death, or this is happening right before I die. Now, why would this be happening? Say I go up to the tippity top of this plant, and then I just die. What is the benefit there? Why would this, why not just die on the soil like I probably normally do as a caterpillar? Why ideally as a caterpillar you're not dying, right? Why at the top of the plant? More visible to a predator, so I'm more likely to get picked up. And this virus is more likely to get passed on. So this is what happens with enslaving, and it is super weird. So a subset of parasites specifically enslave their hosts, meaning that through a variety of methods, they alter the behaviors that their hosts do in order to benefit either themselves or their offspring. So they're going to increase the chance that their host dies and or increase the chance that their host is picked up by the next host in that parasite's life cycle. Okay, so some of this is very simple. You can imagine just the actual load being problematic. They become so weighed down in parasites. They become sickly, they become heavy, they become easy prey. But some of these, as we'll see, they're actually going to alter 
chemicals or amino acid concentrations in the body of these organisms okay, to make them change the way they think and act. Okay, so now they're changing their photoreception, so they think down is up, which is how they get them to head straight to the top. That's rude. There's a parasite that lives in North America and Europe called Leucochloridium paradoxum. When it's inside of a snail's body, it crawls up into the snail's tentacles. Because the tentacles are translucent, you can actually see the parasite inside. And there, it twitches around so that it creates a strange kind of pulsating appearance to the tentacle. So what you see when you see this pulsing is actually the parasite inside the snail. The parasite also causes the snail to crawl up plants. Snails usually stay away from the light, but the parasite takes over its brain and makes it go up. The reason it does that is because the parasite needs to get into a bird. Birds usually don't like to eat snails. When a snail goes up a plant, its tentacle looks like a caterpillar instead of a snail. The bird gets very interested and they swoop down and they take a bite out of the snail tentacle. And that way the parasite is able to get inside the bird. The parasite travels down through its gut, its rectum, and there it becomes an adult, which is his eggs, which then pass out with the bird droppings, where snails come along and feed on them. And now the parasite's eggs get into a new snail, which can get into the tentacles and so on and so on and so on. there you see a lot of our different moving parts working. In case you need to finish. Okay, so we are both increasing the chance of host death, or at least host injury. Right? Losing a tentacle may or may not kill you, depending on what that poor bird does. Uh, but certainly you're increasing the chance of being passed on into the next host. And so what you're doing is altering, right, the snail's perception. And so that it doesn't have, like, that fear of sunlight anymore and causing it to move straight to that sunlight. There's lots of really cool examples of this if you're not familiar with, like, the zombie ants, um, which is a fungus that ants pick up and it ends up in their head, causes them also to climb to the very top of plant stalks, where it then explodes out of their brains. It's very cool. Um, and then when the ants are eaten, right, it gets passed on that way. Um, very surreal sort of thing. Right, the same sort of concept. In that case, it actually just ends up eating away a large portion of their brain. Um, and causes them to do sort of the same thing. Right? Sort of like the high dive at the end for them. Okay, right. any questions about this? 